Crouch. Find. Set. Joe presents the House of Rugby together with Guinness. And the wheels are rolling once again. Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to House of Rugby, brought to you by Joe, together with our very good friends at Guinness. It's story time in Rugby Corner. The Hoff is back. Hmm. How are you? I'm so excited to see him well, mate. I know. Uh, honestly... You've already been flirting before we've even started. I didn't realise it's been two years since I've seen him. Is that right? Yeah, and we were, we were the old synergy back together. It was we are nice. joined by well, a very... I texted him two years ago yeah. <laughs> to meet... Is that after right? We, after we got back from the Lions and... Still no double, t- double blue ticks. Two months ago. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I think that was us yeah. pushing, actually. Mm. It, well, no, because we pushing. wanted him to get on the show, but he wanted a million quid to come on board. South <laughs> 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 of rugby. You know, they pay me that. Not can't afford you. We are joined by a very special guest this week. Uh, viewers will already have clocked it. Those of you on the podcast, two tours with the British and Irish Lions, 56 caps for Ireland, a Leinster legend, former European Player of the Year, now at London Irish. The Tullow tank himself. Lock up your back pockets. Mr. Sean O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> Great How's to you? be here. Great to be here. You are, we were just saying as we walked in, he's looking younger. He is. Is, is that because you've had a good time out, obviously having your head, uh, your, your legs strapped back on, or is this just, um, well, if you lay twice a day, is this both? No, Why are you looking better than the rest no, of us? I need to do a bit more, more moisturising, I think, but um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm minded myself pretty well the last, right? the last year or so, and um, training very, very hard. and um, Got misses now? Yeah, I've had a missus the last over two years. <laughs> make so. sure it's the right, make sure it's yeah, exactly. I've had the, the last last year and a half. It's been out together three years. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a mistake. I've made that mistake a few times. I've been married she's actually more famous in her own right than you are. Yeah, she's doing very well. She's Go doing on. very well. You, she's you um, she's playing in Australia at the minute for Collingwood yeah. AFL. So she's signed there for five and a half months. And yeah, she's flying, loving the professional lifestyle. And... and uh, yeah, learn how to mind herself a bit better, and um, yeah, she's she's doing brilliantly. She's How's home that in, working? Home in April. How's the long distance thing working? Lots yeah, of Skype time, I imagine. No, yeah, there's a lot of that. Um, time difference is a little bit of a problem at times because I want to get into bed early and get some sleep, and yeah. she's only getting up and getting her day going. But she's home at Christmas for two weeks, and I was off for seven or eight days, and so that breaks it up nicely because she leaves fourth November back at Christmas, and then she's back the second week of April. Right. So after Christmas is a little bit tougher because it's a bit longer and just, just we've, like, no, we've no off Sounds like a perfect marriage, though. Yeah, it does. Actually, my, yeah. my wife on a boat yeah, to Australia you, for six months. Just as you get sick of her, yeah. that yeah. she goes, and just as you miss her, she comes back. Yeah. Absence. Absence. Go <laughs> find her, it does. Exactly. It's very nice to reunite the dream team, actually. But he is looking great. I did say this. He's looking better, better than you do. He does look, look, even smashed up, he does look way better than I am. But he was a better player... But slightly better looking. My cl- my wife's got a real shine for, for Sean. Mm. Is that right? But I think she got a shine for his girlfriend now as well. There's a lot of love in that corner of the of the room. Right. So, um, but you know, as as I pointed out to her, her eyes aren't painted on, are they, Sean? She's not made of wood. Exactly. You know, she's just what, what the heart wants. The heart wants. <laughs> what have you done this week? You're wearing more scars. <laughs> yeah. Um. I have. Anything interesting? I had a mini breakdown actually. Oh. What? Literal or? Well, <laughs> no, basically, or, or? no, not quite like that. I, I so, so essentially, um, I came in, we did uh, the live show last week, and then I couldn't stop getting ill. I uh, kept getting a cold and obviously training the whole time and had all my bloods done and they were showing like incredible amounts of like a stress on the body oh. and, I, and I basically just went and got saw Matt Nutt Lovell, the England nutritionist or who was an England nutritionist for a while got a whole new nutrition plan supplement plan um, and I was sleeping better I wasn't sleeping properly and all this kind of stuff even though I was being really professional I just couldn't mm. couldn't get it right so I was a bit over emotional um, but I'm back I'm which, back Monday which, was great which he can get <laughs> emotional yeah We've had one or two of the shows like yeah, that. Yeah, on and off the field. <coughs> I found him to be that kind of fella. Was he high, 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 in I got him to see so. He's yeah. up and down so much. It's quite a roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did. You know, he used to come in the room and he goes, you're as high as a kite. You're as high as a kite today. And you'll, be, you'll be down. You'll be down later. Yeah. <laughs> you're, 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 I've like seen a Mary Poppins. Yeah. They're all floating on the sea. <laughs> yeah. um, three, three hours. Yes. Three hours you were good for. Yeah. And then you were gone for five or six. Yeah. Three, three good hours to get out of my day. And then five or six. That well, it's extraordinary. It's about the duration of our recording. That's as long as you get, yeah. Um, all right, before we go into anything else, I wanted to pick up on Caroline Flack. Yeah. Because she was a friend of yours, wasn't she? <laughs> yeah, um, she was. I mean, look, I... I desperately, desperately, <sighs> desperately sad. Look, it, it was actually quite poignant timing, really, after after last week's show when we talked about uh, social media and bits and pieces. Look, I don't want to overplay it. You know, I'd met, uh, I actually met Caroline during the summer um, a couple of times and got on with, really well with her. Chloe was closer to her, but actually my circle of friends are some of her best friends. Yeah. Um, and I think it's hit everyone obviously massively hard as it would hit anyone. I think uh, for me, it's a really good um, 
sort of sort of flagging the ground really to try to change some of the issues and some of the bits and pieces that are going on in terms of the media uh you know i don't think it extends just to celebrity world to anybody being named uh, in the papers once you know until they're found guilty i think it's got to it's got to change i think the law's got to change around that it's, it's ridiculous that people get named in, in in this stuff and are able to be hounded i think on social media you know i've i i've always talked quite strongly about social media on this show and my opinions on people and you know I, I, interesting enough when we put into the group you know we were talking about changing some of the, the stuff around house of rugby the comment section for example on youtube very toxic comment section in, in a lot of stuff facebook. we do <clears throat> facebook quite toxic and i think now people just have that complete anonymity to be able to do whatever they want how and people say what they want with absolutely no uh repercussions for it and i think that this thing with with caroline it should hopefully uh, you know lead to some sort of law changes so there isn't this anonymity online because in real life if you follow someone down the street shouting wanker 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 all day long mm. you're going to get arrested if you follow someone home and, and and say these things if you keep knocking on someone's door and insulting them you're going to get in trouble yeah if you send a poison pen letter threatening someone i'm going to kill you you should do this you should do this you will be arrested yeah. online when all the laws for stuff are online were, were, were being put together None of this was taken into account. You can do what you want online, say what you want to people, and it's appalling. And even on a, on a show that's as wholesome as, as, as Joe is, <clears throat> it invites, you know, toxicity. I know I'm as, you know, as, as I'm very much like Marmite. I appreciate that. I don't look at the comment section. But when we put into the group about this, well, I think we need to make a stand in, in, in regards to this and maybe, you know, sh turn, it off. turn it off, turn off some of the comment stuff, because I don't think... It's right. The internet shouldn't be used for that purpose. And I think you've seen what happened to, to, to Caroline. And just put yourself in her shoes for a minute. Imagine being so down and not being able to see anything past her reality. And, and unfortunately, when you're in this situation, you believe that that's your entire world. Yeah. But there's, you know, there's 7 billion people in the world and probably not even 2% had heard about this situation or 3% or whatever it is. But when you're in it, you can't escape it. And when you're being hounded, it's like an echo chamber. People just jump on the bandwagon. And you've seen now with the outpouring of people coming out and saying this stuff. But journalists, people from The Sun, who physically uh, you know, have bullied Meghan Markle, have bullied you know, people who put these press, uh, these, these journalists you know, or on TV every morning, right? These poison pen pieces, which then incites other people to be horrible. There's mob mentality. It's got to stop. And I think it, it, House of Rugby is supposed to be fun. We get great guests on. We're supposed to have fun. We're supposed to be lighthearted. There's no need for it. And I, 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 I'm trying to turn all commenting off my thing. I don't, I want to put stuff out there. People like it, they like it. They don't, don't fucking send it to me. You can write on, you can write on the internet, James House was wanker a million times. But you can't come and tell me I'm a wanker and you can't follow me around doing it because it's not acceptable. And if you do call me it, you've got to be able to know who, who is saying what. Because yeah. if I did it in life, you'd get in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not in any way comparing, but have, have you have you had this in your career? I mean, what, what's it like in Ireland? Yeah, yeah, no, I have. <clears throat> That's what I was going to say. Like, I think people kind of think because you're a professional sportsman or you're exposed to that, that oh, he's well used to getting it. Like, And uh, like, obviously I've made mistakes in the past. We all We all do. But yeah, you get you get some abuse over it, and um, I'm not going to sit here. You, I'm not going to sit here. Off or yeah, well, this is the thing. You, like, I'm I'm quite thick-skinned, and I'd be pretty stubborn, and I'd wouldn't really value what other people say about me, bar my close friends and family. But um, you know, when it keeps coming at you at different points, it does get to you a little bit, and um, you'd love to bite back at them. You know what I mean? But it's just not worth that. Like, and as as James says, like something has to be done to stop that happening in the beginning because it's not acceptable or they'd never say it to your face yeah you know i have replied probably to i'd say a handful of people yeah in my whole life and said uh oh, thanks a million for your comment and then they come straight back at you with a sorry yeah like private message oh i'm sorry i didn't really mean that blah 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 so it's you know what i mean it's it, they're, they're fine behind the smoke screen but you know yeah if they come and say it to you, you'd, you'd, you'd have actually you ever, respect Do you ever, because we were more. talking the other day, Tins was saying the other day he was up in uh, Edinburgh and there was some <coughs> just <coughs> chewing his ear off, boring him intense. Do you do you get that in Ireland? Or do you just flex the guns and suddenly uh, no, you, the crowd you, scatters? You, no, you do get it. You do get it in Ireland. Ireland's a very small place compared to over here. That's one thing I've learned from over here. And it's so refreshing to come over here. Are you here. quite enjoying that? I yeah, I am enjoying it. Because you're not looking over your shoulder um, if you're out for dinner or you're having a pint with someone. or Do you know what I mean? Where in Ireland, there's someone trying to take a video of you to put it up online or, you know what I mean, to say, oh, this lad's drinking or, you know what I mean, he's having too much crack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's nearly it. Like, yeah, like I think uh, I think it's because it's such a small place at home and rugby's such a big thing there. It's it. There's a lot made more of. There's a, there's a lot uh, more made of smaller smaller situations. That yeah. you know what I mean. That 
happen in everyday life probably around the world yeah I, com- I couldn't agree more I think I mean I hope something well, there's a sort of hashtag Caroline's law at the moment I, I hope there is some way through it I mean, there is so much noise and the, the, the poor old Danny Cipriani has been hauled into uh, the whole thing yeah, but do you see do you see interesting distress. about the, I mean what's very interesting about this he's apologised today Mike Powell. has he yeah. but, I mean, I, you know, but, but what all I thought was very time. interesting about this <clears> is that um, you know Sips put something up there and uh, blame the press. And I think that we all, you know, I, I, I utilise social media for business purposes, for profile and everything else. I understand that there's two, two, uh, two uh, sides to the coin. What people us- usually say is actually, uh, well, look, if you put yourself out there, you have to expect the repercussions. I don't, I, I don't agree. I don't agree with that. Well, nobody should have to expect to get abused. Um, you know, people, you, you create opinion, you create discussion, that's fine. People can talk about it, you know, but you don't go and attack someone and follow someone around. And I think Mike Parry, with what he said to Danny, was just so appalling and interestingly i thought danny's response was so nice said obviously you know was measured and controlled because when i put my post up about and caroline have talked about things on social media so many people come back well you know you know she was the domestic abuser she all this stuff and it's like no no you're missing the point everybody makes mistakes me more than anybody at at this table i I, you know i I think people make those mistakes but you you don't judge the reason we've got laws and us is to have the to have that judge yes if you're found guilty people should publish that stuff but interesting enough, people coming back with, with hate on hate. And interesting, with Danny's reply, I thought it was measured and controlled. But then other people going at Mike with hate. And I was like, guys, no, you've missed the whole point. Yeah. We, you don't, we don't need to go in on, on everyone, insult everyone, insult everyone. Like, I used to respond. I used to take great pleasure in responding to someone because more often than not, I would get mocked and you would see someone with like teeth like burnt fence posts or somebody that like, looked like a port cabin with a face and you would be like, why are you worried about me? You've got serious bigger, bigger problems than that. Yeah. But I would go back and, and take the piss. The problem is that I'm just perpetuating it and it becomes a game. Yeah. So now I just, I just block, delete, move on, turn, turn comments off. Yeah. But people say you should walk on by and I don't agree with that. I think you should make a stand, make a stand the right way and I think people, I had a really good debate with Courtney was actually under one of my my posts about it because he was very much like it freedom of speech is important you don't want the government intervening i said me you know with well, media law should be changed around what's published around people involved in court cases yeah and i think that social media agencies should um m- make you register your exact profile however you do it in a secure way like he, he suggested as an idea <clears throat> passport put a passport in so you can have access to this so people know exactly who you are what you're doing and everything else there's accountability yeah. and then we'll see how clever people are yeah. you know before you know what's happening and, and people should be able to change the laws around that and i think freedom of speech is always cited in these instances but freedom f- freedom of speech is a framework in which you can have constructive debate and have your beliefs and put them across it's not just an excuse freedom of speech is to, not to go around calling exactly. someone assault someone <clears throat> and say everything else like that it's not you know like i said you can say james house was a dick mm. you can't go and call me up and knock on my door and tell me and send me letters about it yeah. because that's not improving, you know, even yeah. though it's not true. Even when it's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Absolutely no doubt about it. Very, very sad indeed. Um, whichever way you look at it, there'll be thousands of different opinions out there, but incredibly sad. We are going to move on, though, from, from a, a really sad story to a man who just continues to inspire. A quick check on our glasses this week are My Name's Doddy Foundation Pints. Thank you very much indeed uh, to Murray who sent these in. A quick plug for them. You can buy your own at the Doody website, My Name. 5 doddycouk forward slash merchandise. They're trying to raise as much money as possible for Doddy and for Tom Smith. Um, and actually, they're going to be selling them at the Legends game in the not-too-distant future as well. But they want everyone to have a pint for Doddy on Super Saturday at the end of the Six Nations. We'll, I'll drink to that. You're too much of an athlete at the moment, and mm. you are quietly I'll supping I'll yours. Sip <laughs> well done, everyone. <laughs> well done, everyone. Uh, at the My Name's Doddy Foundation. If you'd like a pint glass, get involved. Um, coming up, we're going to dig back through Sean's back catalogue. <laughs> Whatever Are it we? is, Dane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll find one, out yeah. about Not these two on the Lions tours, and we might discover whether Sean would always keep James out of there. And we've touched on that already, but we'll also go into some of the other bedtime antics between the two of you. <laughs> uh, we're also going to look ahead to the third round of the Guinness Six Nations, in particular our pint predictor game as well. But let's have a quick catch up with you first of all. How is life at London Irish? How did it come about? Where are you in your recovery? When are you going to be back? Have you still got what um, it takes? Life has been very good uh, since I came over in end of November. Yeah. And how did it come about? It came about with a conversation with um, with Decky, De- yep. Declan Kidney. Um, Decky gave me my first cap in 2009. And um, when I knew that I wasn't going to be, I suppose, RFU contracted or Leinster contracted, um, we got on to Decky. And um, 
was that a conversation you had with the RFU and that so they said thanks and this is yeah, it I, or well, did you say no I had a conversation <clears> with them and we, I, I thought in my head that we were coming to some sort of an agreement of some sort but um, as it turned out that didn't didn't transpire that way and um, I knew if the RFU weren't coming to the table that Leinster wouldn't be able to keep me in terms of financially um, and they had a lot of lads contracted already and I didn't want a case of um, younger guys that were in the academy either moving on or, or being moved on from the academy if I was to stay either, which may have happened. We'd well, have to get rid of the whole academy section to pay for <laughs> you, wouldn't they? No, well, it's not even that. It's because <coughs> they probably, there are a few maybe thought that I, I was going to block some of the younger guys coming through. Right. But um, I suppose, you know, nowadays back rowers... You know, it's, very, it's an incredibly you, brave you position. Got, you got a few over there I rem- as well. I remember at the time of the contract talks that we were, uh, I think there were six or seven of the Leinster lads injured. So <laughs> we were down to the bare bones, even though we had nine or ten back rowers. But um, yeah, so after after two conversations with Decky, um, it was basically a done deal. And um, what he wanted me to come over here and do and, and to try and implement and um, a bit of the culture stuff, uh, I was excited about. And... Um, you know, it was kind of a new start for me and a new way of life and a new experience. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it now. Even though it was tough at the time, you're kind of thinking, yeah, you never want to leave. Like, in, in were you emotional life. leaving? Was it tears and big yeah. hugs, or was it? Yeah, there was. There was a lot of tears. Um, really, there was a lot of tears around the, the making a decision and speaking to my family and uh, you know speaking to Sarah and even some of her family and. Uh, bits and pieces like that because I suppose you're so used to something and you you don't want to let it go either. You know that you're so lucky to be in that setup. Um, but once your decision is made, then and it's probably just the way I am as well. I'm on to the next job. Once once it was done and dusted, I was happy yeah. that I'd made the decision, and I was looking forward then. Were you carried out, sort of, so to speak, of Leinster? We we a thousand backpats and Leinster awards do and recognition and all that kind of thing. Yeah, there was a bit of that. There was a bit of that, which is nice, obviously, because I wasn't. I had played a few good games then the last year, but I wasn't happy the way I played in the in the Champions Cup final. Um, and uh, leading up into that, my hip was on fire at that stage. But um, yeah, no, there was a bit of that, which is nice, and uh, got to celebrate a few nights with the boys and. Um, you know, enjoyed the last kind of week that I had with them, um, yeah. and that was nice as well. And um, you know what I mean? You Can you fond memories? Yeah, absolutely. Can you just quickly tell us what the injury that you've had is? I mean, it sounds. Yeah, so I've had a hip resurfacing. So it's exactly like Andy Murray's. What? What is? Yeah, so it's on. a hip. It's involve? a hip resurfacing. So they go in and they put a um, stainless steel cap over your actual ball. And uh, an, ins- an insert ball, of, your, of your head. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't got cement, one. You've had a few cement cement metallic inserts, bullet. have you? Yes, yeah, and they insert that, and yeah, it's, it's like a. It's and like that's a how you make a baby. Joke. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and talk us through the the rehab and the process. And yeah, did you think it was all over at one point? Yeah, I definitely thought that it, it was a possibility because there was a couple of steps. I had four operations last year before the end of the season in terms of. The first one was a little clean out of the joint to yeah. see would it help it free it up and stuff because I had no cartilage it was bone on bone and then the second one was a bit more extensive a bit of a shave and stuff then I had um, traction with injections and like a silicone thing put in and that didn't really work and then the last resort was obviously the re- resurfacing and with that there's never a guarantee but yeah touch wood touch wood yeah everything's so been settled, everything's yeah. been great and uh the transition between leinster i've done i've done about three months rehab with them and then four months here so yeah it's been brilliant the uh, two medical teams have been brilliant together and um and yeah. still, still issuing laws on on the field in the two weeks you've been back in your boots um yeah just getting been, getting into it i'm getting into it now yeah it's 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 so funny because no matter how much running or fitness or conditioning you do it's the same every every time you come back from an injury that's like hell it's just like yeah you just get back out and start playing rugby you're like <gasps> tongue yeah. hanging out <laughs> do you find it's always the first yeah. like mauling session or the first tackle thing the next day you're like <laughs> yeah yeah no i'm having a great time <laughs> the, first, you're like, the first mauling session was two <laughs> weeks ago and i like the very first hit i went in I like spasm my neck. Oh, mate. <laughs> Give yourself so a sting. I had sti- that for the rest of the week. I was like, like a stinger. At that. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, so. Can we rewind back to, just before we do that, where, who came up with the tallow tank? I don't know who came up with it. it was, this it, was a thing. Yeah, it was just a thing. Well, when did it, when did it come about? Yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, I said it was. Was it, was it early, early days or was it breaking it was, through? Or? It was about, I think, 2011 maybe. 
2011, I think yeah. is when it started, because there was a horse that I was involved in. Right. And his na- we named him the Tullow Tank. But right. the owner of the horse said to me, I'll give you a leg of the horse if you let me use the name. Oh, really? I said she can use the name. I didn't have a patent or anything like that. Yeah. Not yet, anyway. But no, it's patent now. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> Image rights. No, so yeah, so that's where that came from. But um, yeah, it's just one of these things. Let's get back to the beginning then. So, what were you like as a? I, I, I sort of got quite a good picture. But what were you like as a kid? Because it wasn't rugby first for you, was it? No, it was GEA. Um, a lot of Gaelic football at home, and hurling. Um, that Sky is uh, flying with now but um, there was a lot of that there was soccer there was basketball there was, I played everything I could when I was younger Yeah. but I was mostly out on the farm um, I used to work an awful lot I used to take Tuesdays off school sometimes we didn't have a whole lot at home so I used to give mum my, my paycheck is that right? yeah When on a Tuesday I'd, I'd say to her I'd be in my uniform and I'd say can I go to work today and like some days she'd be like absolutely not and then other days she'd be like yeah yeah really? go on go on so I used to go work. So what were you doing? Lo- I used to be working in the local mart. Yeah. So basically, I'd be catching sheep all day long, and loading them into trailers for for the f- different farmers. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so that's what I used to do. Uh, not every Tuesday, but some. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, but what was it say? How so did she know? Yeah, I was about to say, how did she know when to send you? When she asked you for six eggs, you brought back three and went there's six. She's like, Sean, get back to school. Was that how she worked it out? So like that. No, it was yeah. very. I've got your five sheep. There's seventeen in the back of a van. I think it was something like I could have been twenty twenty pounds maybe for a full day at that time. Wow. Twenty pounds a day, and um, I used to. You wouldn't sneeze on someone for twenty no, pounds these days, would you? No. no. But what happened was, I was, I was, a few of the farmers um, used to get me from after after the mart was over then, yeah. and they'd bring me and let me sort out all their sheep and stuff with them because I was pretty handy at catching them and throwing them in a the tra- trailer. Like, <laughs> so yeah. Is it a ridiculous? You can see it. Is it a ridiculous question to ask? Did that have any sort of? I love the idea of Absolutely. Colin Pine Tree. It did. Absolutely. There's there's lads at home that play on my Tuller Rugby Club team yeah. um, that we've coached and they're, they're farmers. And these boys are like, some of the best lads on it are the sheep farmers because they're just, they will chop everything and Spatial have awareness. something by the leg in a minute. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Can you do no, but he, the thing is, you know, like genuine, there is a thing when, <laughs> when, when you've got like Nick Easter had like dad strength. Yeah. Like your old, I was like, uh, when I bet sure he has farmer strength. Like, look at him, like big wrists, big hands, big arms, big shot. Like yeah. that, like it goes for a lot of it accounts for a lot of strength. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you know, if he if you didn't do a lot of weights, you'd still be yeah. like a. a, a, a you didn't go yeah, mad. No, no, because when I did, I didn't do any weights till I was. What year did I go into the academy? 18, maybe? But, like, right. I hadn't done any weights. I wasn't any way muscly or anything at the time. And all the lads were looking at me because some of them were in their uh, second-year academy. Yeah. And I had, like, a 15-kilo plate in each hand doing flies <laughs> after the first first or second week because I didn't re- I didn't know how to do weights. And I wasn't sure how <laughs> weights to lift. <laughs> so I'd look over and there'd be lads laughing at me in the gym because I'd be, like, trucking them away. Didn't didn't realise how strong I'd get it at all. Yeah. And then I, I had actually surpassed some lads in the first year of my weight development compared to their second or third year and I like I just got big so quickly from doing weights I've ne- I'd never done a weight though until I moved to Leinster really never. and did you have to maintain it or did you sort of were you no. one of those that ultimately they said well, can you actually stop because you're getting too big yeah I can yeah I can do like if I'd done two weight sessions a week or a total body weight session a week I'd stay exactly the same weight I'd it's never right. I don't lose muscle mass easy Amazing. And then I could, on the flip side of that, I can put on weight very quickly, bad weight, if I wasn't right. reminding myself. Do you worry that. about that post-rugby? It's a little fat man no, trying to get out or not. No, I, because I tell you, I did years ago. I don't anymore because now I know exactly how to manage myself when I'm not tra- playing. And that's just two meals a day for me. Is that right? Yeah. Happy as uh, there. Just two meals a day, is yeah. that it? <clears throat> nice. Yeah. It's interesting talking about your, your 20 quid a day. What did you spend your first Leinster paycheck on? The first contract I got, um, I bought uh, a Massey Ferguson tractor. Over it at home. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear him in the background. Yeah. Sigh. Why, why I done that was uh, because one was safety. So about two years previous to this, yeah. I was drawing a load of like stones up this laneway at home. We were making a car road or something. And dad had this international tractor. Like no brakes. You'd have to bleed the brakes before you get into it. Right. You'd have to hit a, hit a few wires off each other to get it going. Like, <laughs> nearly, nearly like you were robbing something. And I was going up a hill with this tractor one day and it died on me. And there was no brakes on it. And I was in first gear. So I tried to keep it in first gear, but it popped out of first gear, rolled down the hill, jackknifed with me in it. And like, just, I was lying on my side like this in the tractor going, 
I need a new tractor. <laughs> 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 Quickly. So the minute I had enough money gathered to... to I actually bought it on finance, actually, in a place... Um, called Schlemish up in Antrim yeah. and uh, bought this really nice Massey Ferguson tractor and uh, I, that's, I've stuck with Massey Ferguson ever since. Love that. What did you yeah. sponsor by? What, what did you spend yeah. your first paycheck on? Uh, Red to I, what did I spend? I, I said to him before because we, we talked about this. I bought a pair of night vision goggles once. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. And do you know what? I never used them. Um, they were terrible because they weren't that good. You know, like, they got like different generations of them. I, I remember <clears> spending <throat> a lot of money on that. No, my first thing I thought, oh, <laughs> I got a, my first paycheck. Uh, my nan's Vauxhall Astra. So I learned in a Fiat Panda 4x4 Alpine edition, which was like uh, 900cc, and right. a, a plunger for 4x4. And when my dad taught me to drive in it, yeah. I had to have the window open to be able to drive, and he had to have the window open. When I changed gear, I'd bang into his leg. So it was this rascal motor. So I took my nan's Vauxhall Astra on, and I went down to Halfords, right? And I got a head unit in the car, you know, so I got like a, 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 I got a mini disc player changer for the boot. I had one of those. I backed mini disc. I backed mini disc as well. Ah. Idiot, man. I had a mini disc changer, got a nice head unit, and then I had um, speakers put in. I had the most rascal car, this old sort of Vauxhall Astra rolling around. Then I went down to, to Bristol to see mates, and some bloke prized the door open, smashed it, pulled everything out. Ruined it. But right. that was my first paycheck. Yeah. I was, Rule I number one, don't go to Bristol. When did you two first play against each other? Do you remember? Uh, you would have remembered the noise, surely. That was in 10. Right. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Good good memory. We did something I the was other day. On and then the following year, we, you came to, um, you came to the Viva, because I remember actually absolutely destroying you at a breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually on. Yeah, it's but it's actually, actually on me. YouTube. It is yeah, on YouTube. It is, but yeah. if you watch out, because loads of people send me that to me, my feet still on the other, are on the ball and one leg's in the air. So technically, it was a steal. The referee didn't give it to me. Nah. It wasn't. Nah, well, it wasn't. You know. And then Ben Young's had a crack as well. Then. <laughs> <laughs> did yeah, no. But I I thought do we never play we never played against uh, under twenty one together against each other did we? No, no, it didn't. No. Do that. Uh, uh, I skipped. I skipped. Uh, too good. No, I went. I went twenty ones when I was eighteen. Right, and then it changed to twenties the following year. So I'm I'm and then it, ca it came back. Yeah, but you're younger than me, aren't you? How old exactly. are you? Exactly. So I only played a year twenty oh, or right, a year twenty no. ones when I was should have been under nineteen. Oh uh, yeah, and yeah. And one year twenties. Right, fine. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. How did your sort of career take off, kind of thing? You obviously, you arrived amazing strength, etc. But how did you get from young buck um, to right? You're in it. A bit of luck, I think, because the Leinster Academy, in fairness, they they took a bit of a gamble on me, bringing me into the academy first and foremost, because they wanted or originally to put me in the sub academy for a year. Okay. But in the interviews with your parents, we yeah. like I looked across at at uh, I think it was Collie McIntyre at the time, the academy manager, and I said. Like this, can't, it's not viable for me. I couldn't afford to come up on the train to Dublin, like from Tolo, right? Twice a week, you know what I mean? Yeah. We we just couldn't do it. So he, they went away and had a chat and rang me back and offered me a full academy place. Then is that right? So 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 in fairness to them, they they seen something. Yeah. And um, in, I I had captain the Leinster youth at the time. Yeah. And, and been involved with the Irish <coughs> youth and Irish eighteen. So, um. And then it just took off from there. But it took me probably two years of to get actually thinking about rugby. Because yeah. I was only training with my local club, Tullow, yeah. on a Tuesday and a Friday night. Yeah. And, and eating a big breakfast roll on a Sunday morning and going to play a game. <laughs> like we used to, I remember going to the local shop at home, Frank Burns, and ordering like sausages, rashers, black pudding, white pudding. And the game being an hour and a half, like... <laughs> Didn't know anything about nutrition, like when that's, uh, when I was seventeen. That's an extraordinary thing to put in the engine of a finely tuned what, athlete. Uh, you used to, used to go we've talked about before. James Wellwood once we were playing away at, um, Gloucester second team game. Yeah. We had Paul Stridgen, yeah. you know, bottom of the rope, and you know Bobby, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, Bobby Boucher and, and James Wellwood's called him up half an hour before the game. It was like Bobby, um, I've eaten a, a pork pie on a Mars bar, and uh, uh, what should I do? Bobby's like, mate, you're playing in half an hour. What you should what, what should you do? And he went. You're a fucking idiot. Put the phone down. <laughs> well, it's just warm. Let's throw it all up in the warm up. I'm like, what are you? What are you doing? Yeah, like, people no. just do the stupidest things before before games. You, you lived with a nutritionist, though, didn't you? Yeah, I, I did. But that was like that was probably five years, six years. Was that now. a club instalment into your life, or was that a sort of I need to be the best? No, it wasn't actually. It was that, it just it just happened one day. It was actually Daniel Davy is his name. Um, he has a brilliant book out. Actually, you should get it. Yeah. <laughs> Eat up, <laughs> raise your game. <laughs> Eat up, raise your game. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, it's very very good. Excellent. But um, he. The, um, what happened there was. Did he read was, it to you? Because you, you didn't do no, it. No, no, it's, it's, it's fine. It's got like, a lot of pictures, it's pictures in it. Pictures in it. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be fine. You but finished coming in. Yeah. yeah, you'll be fine. But he, uh, what happened there was he came into Leinster and he was uh, he was only after joining the staff. Yeah. 
I went up and met him and um, I said, how are you? What's your name? Daniel. I said, all right, Danzy. And he was like, no, it's not Dan- Danzy. It's Daniel, he said, in the office, and I s- in front of everyone. And I said, we're going to have fun with you, aren't we? <laughs> so I said to everyone in the office, said, this lad's name is Danzy from now on. <laughs> and we absolutely hated it. But about two days passed and then uh, Ronan, our manager, came and said, Daniel's looking for a place to stay. Have you a spare room in your house? And I said, I have actually. And uh, I went up to him and I said, do you want to live with me? And he said, yeah, sure I will. And that was it. Like, But he completely changed he my mindset. He's still Danzy. He's still Danzy, yeah. Love that. Completely changed my mindset to food, actually. He was, he was brilliant for me. Really? Brilliant. In what way? Were you, were, you, were you a bit sort of off the rails? Not necessarily... I wasn't off the rails, but I was very stuck in my own way of doing things in terms yeah. of food and what kind of worked for me, which was fine. But... I wasn't as lean as I could be. I wasn't, <coughs> at the weekends, I kind of go, like this when I'm 21, like yeah. 22 maybe. And then when I met him, I was probably 23, 24. But at the weekends then I'd be like, I wouldn't be strict with my food because I'd be after training all week. In my head, like I'd be more lenient. But yeah. now I'd be very good, like all week, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So he got me more consistent. The minute I moved to him, I was way more consistent. And then I also was aware of, of, like what I'm doing to my body when I'm, you know what I mean, when I'm off from rugby and meant to be recovering, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. he was brilliant for me as a professional and he, he changed a, a few attributes that I that needed changing at the time. And what were the, when, when your early years in that Leinster squad, was that likes of Keith Gleeson, Victor Costello, yeah. Reggie Corrigan? Yeah. yeah I what used were to, those days like? That was my first year academy. What I used to do as well is uh, for a few bob was I asked Leinster if I could have a job Right. So I'd train and yeah. then I'd go and I'd uh, clean all the first team's boots and fill their ice baths and clean all the dressing rooms after them every day. And that was my job. So the Leinster used to pay me on top of my academy thing, whatever it was, 100 quid a week, I think it was at the time, or yeah. maybe 150. So I'd be filling all the ice baths and waiting until the boys were finished, all the recovery and stuff. But I was getting to watch them train and stuff as well. So it was brilliant. brilliant. And I remember Keith Leeson uh Probably one of the first sessions I watched, he was out before the before training started doing these like interval runs, like. Yeah. And you remember looking at him at that stage, like great shape. He was a really good professional, as Lee was, and uh, it just made made you kind of think, Jesus, he's out doing extras here now, yeah. you know, extra work, like. And it was great to see how it all all it, it all um op- the operation of the whole thing. And what about the boys in the backs who I imagine were kings of Dublin, like Brian, Shane Horgan, Felipe. Yeah. Did you learn a thing or two from yeah, these characters? They were quite, uh, they were just class to look at back then. You know what I mean? If you compare rugby 10 years ago to now, like it's, yeah. well, it's not chalk and cheese, but there's a lot of after happening in it, obviously. But uh, one of my first sessions actually with Brian, it was about, it must have been the following year. I remember Eric Miller. I was yeah. like, I was mustered as a young fella, getting over balls and trying to poach. And he started shooing me like really badly one day. And next minute, all I see was this bang coming over the top. And it was a Driscoll, like absolutely smashed him and says, you know, you're the, he was down on top of me. He says, you're, you're a disgrace, like can't be doing that. And I knew then, like, do you know what I mean? He'd, he, he, it didn't matter who you were really yeah. to him at that stage that he was going to, he was going to mind you if he thought he was, you were in the right. Yeah. Um, so those type of things like were, uh, were great to have around you in, the, in that environment, especially a young fella coming in. Yeah. I mean, I had a similar thing uh, to, to Wasp once. Um, Football volley was um, was was shooing me on the floor, and Lawrence came running in and then punched me in the head and stood on me as well. <laughs> <laughs> so the lesson was that yeah, yeah. slightly different story. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Well, I was making it up; it didn't happen. But it's just just to show the fact that Sean was Paul. obviously uh, 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 an imperious talent and everything else like that, and I was just getting filled in for, for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Double or quit. You know, yeah, uh, Josh Lucy tells a great story. So once he was in the playground, once he was getting beaten up, and he saw his brother, and he thought, "Oh, brilliant." My brother's going to come and save me. His brother ran in and started filling him into. But he did like he did win the most likes, get shot by his own side of what? So <laughs> is, that <laughs> actually, is that actually a thing on the match? Tr- yeah, 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 yeah. He did, yeah. He, yeah. Tw- two years in a row, and then Peter Scrivener won it. Um, yeah. uh, Dawson was in the academy with, with uh, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Paul Norton oh, Jones. Oh, yeah, he would have been, wouldn't yeah. he? He was like, your memories of him. When, when we seen him first, like he was an absolute animal, like compared to anyone in the academy. Loved weights, but couldn't run. <laughs> like absolutely, was yeah. massive. Like we were so best strong. mates, similar. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was he was a great fella because he was like he's such a good personality as well. Yeah. So it was a great crack to have him around the place for so long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that is it. That's an amazing story about the um, the cleaning of the boots. Who who gave the best Christmas tip? 
I know. I I don't think anyone. It wasn't like the Wimbledon no, crazy no. gang where they sort of. They just. Uh, I just kind of went in when they were out there and stuff, and no one slipped your little. No, no, that's, no. That's not, I'm, I'm disappointing. No. Did you did you bring kids on like that when you reached that that point of your career? Is that um, is that still a thing or is it? Yeah, I in the, in yeah in a different way maybe because it was um in I suppose up until five years ago I would have had more of a. I would have been less tolerant with you, some of the younger lads. Right. And Were then, you a good senior pro at Leinster? Yeah, I'd like to think so. Yeah, I, I obviously I've made my stay, made mistakes, etc. Like everyone does, but I think ninety five percent of the time I was. Yeah. You get me. Yeah. And then there's that few times that I've probably let myself down and the club down on on different issues. But um, can we go into those? You just you just have to learn about them. We won't go into those. No. But it was is that redacted from the yeah, autobiography? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or will there be a, will there be a chapter on that? And it might be a chapter on that. It yeah. might be a chapter on that. But it's um, no. I think I think I've always encouraged young lads to to be themselves, and um, I've always said to most of the young lads coming through that if they ever needed it, to give me a shout, or if you want to do video, come and come and get me, and I'll do videos etc. Et with you. But then on the other hand of that, then you're on the field with them and they're frustrating you and you want to give them a thump as well. Yeah. So like there's there was both ends of that and some lads got both sides of it maybe, but it's just I think that's the way it was with us growing up as well. Like yeah. we like when Leo was playing with, against us in training and stuff, like you get an elbow or you get a knee or you get something like you know what I mean? Off yeah. him, for instance. And it was the same with with Czechs even managing us, you know what I mean? He used to give us a hard time all the time, but it made us into good players and yeah. that group of lads like Johnny Sexton's and Keane Healy's, etc. I want to come on to all of that and ask about Leo and Stuart Lancaster. Mark yourself had a ten as a senior pro. We've touched on it before. Um, I mean, I had a similar mentality to to Sean, to be honest with you. Um, I think I was probably, I don't know, eight and a half out of ten. Yeah. I think I was, you know, I, I tried to lean by example in terms of the way I conducted myself. You know, I, I had players, you know, I, I did some work with, with um, Jack Willis early on in his career and he came around to my house and went through videos and bits and pieces and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I always was very open. If people wanted to work, I would always come, you know, come and help them. I was quite hard on people because... Uh, I think it's it's quite a fun environment to be to be able to do that, you know. Like I purposely got, you know, um, Tom Willis's name wrong. I kept calling him Tim, you know, so everyone called him Tim. <laughs> just and I knew it was wrong, but just those little things. Um, but I thought in terms of the way I conducted myself pre-game and everything else, and I also showed that I think you can have a personality yeah. or enjoy life yeah. outside of rugby, but also be a professional. You know, I I did a lot of video analysis. I did a lot of extra training. I was always doing extras after mm. after training and, and trying to to broaden my horizons and work with other people. So yeah, I think that, but I also gave people a hard time. If you know, someone acted like a Muppet or came in or dressed like a tit, then they were gonna get it. But that's part and parcel. That's why for 18 and a half seasons, I laughed every single day. And, and I yeah. mean, you know, we'll come on to me and Sean sharing, but you know, when, when I got to know Sean, I mean, we, when we've been here, we don't stop laughing because that's I, the point. I think, I think that's the fine line as well with all that stuff. You have to be able to have a bit of both, I think. And nowadays, yeah. I think professionals, they're, they're just like, bang, it's all about rugby. Where the personality side of it is maybe is is being lost a little bit. Yeah. There's certain lads still have it, but there's a lot of lads that don't, and it's very important to keep that within the environment in the club, like. But also, not oh, necessarily extracurricular, but a broader horizon than just a rugby pitch. And um, you talking about your upbringing and the work ethic that you was instilled in you. I mean, how much did that help you get to where you got? To? Oh, massively so, because I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder as well because of that. How, I was how like, did that come out? How did that manifest itself? It probably, it's probably that at the start, at the very start of my career, everyone was saying he's not going to make it. Do you know what I mean? Because he's not from a school, or he's not. From did you get quite a lot of that? Yeah, I did get a lot of that. Like, yeah, and, and it was like, <coughs> you'd, you'd overhear things in your local club. You'd overhear people, like a lot of people at home. I owe a lot to for their support and everything. But yeah, I'd wonder at the time, did they really believe it? Like. Or did mm. they think I'd make it to get there? And at the time in my head, at 16, 17, I was like, I'm going to prove all these wrong. And it was probably wanting to do a bit for my family, but as well for the whole area at home. Um, because it's a small place, etc. And it's a real, it is a close-knit club, my, my taller rugby club, and all the football clubs around the place as well, etc. that I've grown up with. So I wanted to just give it a right bash and, and uh, do it for a lot of people, you know. You certainly did that. I just, I, we've got a really good quote here from you on your early days. I used to go mad when I was playing football because everyone would be giving out to the referee. When you say mad, I mean, would, would you... 
Yeah, I'd, quite I'd, sparky in a tinderbox. Yeah, but I'd start. I'd I'd start saying just shut up and get on with the game. Like with with GA or soccer, for instance, they're always yapping at the ref like now I mean in a bad way yeah whatever yeah. about me doing it on the rugby field <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to trying to put a, put a point across but you know what I mean it could be actually abusing the ref on the field yeah and my point is with like football and stuff at home still I think it's tolerated and we're talking with like tolerance levels yeah it's it's still tolerated like if someone says something to a referee he'll just like kind of let it on like where if you said it in rugby you'd be off the field yeah you know what I mean as as we've seen <clears> in the past Nigel would have you in the cold showers in absolutely no time at all. <clears throat> um, let's move on and then come back. We're going to have a little time out, a little mid-trail break because you're listening to and watching House of Rugby uh, on Joe together with our good friends at Kinnis with me, Alex Payne, alongside James Haskell and the one and only Sean O'Brien. Still to come, we're going to look ahead to round three of the Guinness Six Nations. Uh, but before that, our boxing show TKO returned this week and it kicked off with the legendary WWE wrestler Kurt Angle who compared notes with Carl Frampton on training, pain and pain management. You're watching the House of Rugby on Joe, together with Guinness. I think the worst pain I had, and I still have it now, is um, an amateur wrestling right before the Olympics. I got thrown on my head and I broke my neck. Mm. And um, I didn't know it and I kept wrestling. And uh, that day I ended up winning um, the US Open and that uh, put me in a good position to make the Olympic team for the Olympic trials. Uh, it made me the top guy, so I didn't have to wrestle the mini tournament to face the winner of the mini tournament. I was the guy that the mini tournament faced. Um, so I I, um, I couldn't get passed by any doctor. No doctor would pass or would would allow me to wrestle. So um, I eventually found a doctor, and he said the only thing you can do you can't train. You just we'll just stick you in a neck with Novocaine, and you won't feel the pain. And he was right. I, every match I had at the trials and the Olympics, I got 12 shots of Novocaine in the back of my neck. Wow. Couldn't feel it for about an hour. I'd so go out and wrestle, and then an hour later, I'd be in a lot of pain again. So you won the Olympic Games with a broken neck? Yeah, yeah. Fairly valid. That is insane. Um, I mean, that's an extraordinary story, winning gold with a broken neck. We've obviously spoken about your hip that's been salivated back on. Is that the worst of what you've been through? You've had a few. Yeah, it's the worst... It's the worst ongoing pain I've had. Does it does it physically hurt every day now? No. Oh, okay, because you've had it sorted. I've, it hasn't hurt, <coughs> honestly, again, touch wood, since I've had the operation. Right. The minute I woke up from that operation, I had no pain. And I had a pain in the front of my hip for since November 2017. Wow. And um, it was actually after South Africa. I was walking down the hallway next morning for breakfast. Next morning, I just had a pain in my hip. That was it. And it was there for two years? Yeah. And it was literally not sleeping at night. Had this pain. Had to have, prop up my leg with a pillow, etc. It was. It was definitely the worst one because it was there all the time. That yeah. was the problem. It wasn't a thing where oh, I'm after getting a bang on the head or my arm or something is banged up, and it just it's there for a couple of days and it's gone. This was there constantly. Yeah. And the amount of you know that Andy Murray documentary that he made, like when I was watching that, I was like thinking I was exactly like you were because I was crying at night time. I was uh, crying after training sessions. Yeah. Crying on the field because you'd have to stop the training session and walk off. Um, stuff like that. It was it was how, mad. Like. How much does that get into the head as much as hurt physically? Yeah, you just you say to yourself, it's not worth this. Like I, I I'm you know what I mean. I'm done. Like type thing. And yeah. then you go home and you have your little <laughs> sulk for the hour and a half, and then you get back on the bandwagon and say, I'll I'll beat this again because it's just a competitor. I think in you and. You know what I mean? It's your life as well. So you're yeah. you're kind of saying, I'm going to give this every shot I can give to, I suppose, do what makes you mo happy. Like, yeah. And um, that's why I wouldn't let it. That's why I wouldn't just give up or 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 say, you know what, I've enough of this, because it wasn't on my own terms. Not that I meant to prove to anyone in terms of rugby. Yeah. But I love doing this job, and that's what I want to do yeah. for as long as I can. And um, that's why I said I get it done. What's the, what's the thing that your toe the thing that hurts the most? Um, the most frustrating. Look, I, I, it's really interesting to talk about the pain stuff. I, I started going to some um, some therapy about lo lots of things. I think it's important to <laughs> important to do that. Yeah, no, no, it was a sport. The, the lights. It was a sports therapy. No, it was, it was initially over sports therapy stuff and everything else. And one of the factors we talk about was was being in pain. And I think I've probably been in pain uh, every day for the last seven or eight years. 
uh, maybe longer. Um, and it's a very weird thing because you become accustomed to pain um, and it, and it, you don't realize how it affects you and how you, you, you get on with it. You know what I mean? You get on with it and you justify it and you reconcile pain. And then bizarrely, you go and do things that bring you more pain, but you do it because you want to do it and love it. And, and it's yeah, a well, weird... Not talking about me here. We're talking no, 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 no. But it's like a weird. It's <laughs> can't a weird, stand pain. You can't stand yeah, pain. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a different spelling. It's yeah. a very different. Um, it's a, it's a weird situation, and I think you know uh, it affects you waking up every morning. You know, or going to you know hobbling from one side of the room to the other, whether it's ankle, foot, toe, neck, you know, elbows, whatever it might be. Um, you no know, touch with I survived my knees and shoulders, but I've had lots of things you know along those lines, and you know, or, or getting to go and not being able to stand up for too long. We or out shopping or whatever. I, yeah. I don't go shopping because I can't I can't can't stand up for that long. Having to sit down, waking up in pain, you know, most of the most of the time. And just tolerating it, dealing with it. And luckily, I, I never went. I'm not a big one for popping pills, so I didn't go along that, along that line. But there's a lot of colleagues, a lot of players, a lot of people in cross sports who resort to anti-inflammatories a lot of time to deal with n normal stuff. And obviously, I've gone into fighting um, again, which is bizarre. And I was talking to the ther you know, therapist about it. And it's like, well, you know, why would you? Why you, know, if you justify? You reconcile pain in your head, and you go again. And it's something that we all rugby players have to deal with. And actually, bizarrely, on this topic, I got a message from some uh, lady from, on Instagram today saying that you know what level of pain is normal. Her son plays uh, rugby, um, and his sh sh neck and back and shoulders hurt. What is a tolerable level? I mean, I don't think I was. You know, by the time we we played, and certainly when when you know. Um, you know, I was playing for England a bit. I don't think I ever had a game where I was 100% fit or 100% pain free or something else. And, 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 it, and it affects you emotionally because, you know, like your temperament, you know, you, you justify your mind, but someone else can't understand what you're going through. And then, for example, because we train very hard and, I, you know, I've seen, you know, you know, Sean plays in an extremely abrasive way, trains in a very hard way. I, you know, I train, you know, in a tough way. You put your body through it. One of the hardest things I had to in my career was to learn to do less to actually be better, to arrive to games slightly fresher uh, and manage yourself. And then, you know, you start looking at recovery. And, and interesting enough, the thing with CBD oil and rugby players is that as soon as you tell a rugby player, take this, it will take away your pain. You're getting, you're getting people coming across you going, where did you get this from? Where did you get that from? <laughs> you know, turmeric, you get some bloke across the car park, yeah. Sean will be like, Haskell, turmeric, talk well, to you. Well, you haven't sent me any of that. Job, no, I haven't, yeah, I'm going to send them oh, the CBD. Yeah. 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 All those kind of things that people are trying to get on board with. And it's a constant state. And whether you're a wrestler like Kurt Angle or, or you know, a lot of these people reconcile. It's, and it's a bizarre thing. And if you could find a drug that dealt with arthritis, dealt with these pain that could make you better, didn't destroy your kidneys and your stomach, you'd be a billionaire. Well, some of the people are, or, or, but they all have terrible side effects. But it, it is really weird. Favourite WWE wrestler of all time? Hulk Hogan. Brett the Hitman Hart. Strong. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. British Bulldog. British Bulldog's good. Ultimate yeah. Warrior was pretty cool Ultimate as well. Warrior. I used to the have policeman. I used to have uh, them all. Did you really? The figurines. I did, yeah. yeah. I had a little, a little um, ring. Mm, yeah. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Duggan. The Undertaker. Uh, Randy Stop Savage. Stone, Stone, Stone Cold Steve Austin as well. And Jake the Snake. Jake I actually Snake. met, I think I'm, I met one of them in... The Undertaker. America. Well, he's still going. He is. Um, the man the Undertaker forgot. That's what they call um, Ronnie Wood. No, Ronnie Wood. Keith from the start. Alex Corbusero absolutely loves that. Loves that. I've yeah. never into W. I liked no. W as a kid, but then when I found out it was fake, I was a bit like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, the two of you, I kind of want to soften the lights. Here. Yeah. <laughs> was it, was it, did it start in New Zealand or was there a little spark of, you're all right, um, before? Yeah, probably the, the friendship started in New Zealand, but before that, I always... What did you think of him before New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah. yeah, I thought he was a wanker. Did you really? Yeah, yeah, I did. You're the 53rd person in 54 shows. But you know what? I that. thought that, I thought that before I ever heard or asked a question about Haskell. Right. But when I, when I actually asked a question about him, everyone said good things about him. Yeah. So then, like, that was my perception. Because? At, at the very start. Um... Probably a bit to do with social media and stuff like that. and Or media in general. Yeah, yeah, media in general, probably. DJing and stuff like that, you know. How yeah. can you be like, how can you How can you do both type thing? He must be crazy, like. Yeah. But, um, and then when, when I met him then, it was just like, it was just go crack from the, from the word off, so. Then these these you, are the stories that make you happy, aren't they? It, it, it's cause I, Winning people around. Because I actually, so... I've never talked to Sean about this. It was always, it's, I obviously um, admired Sean as a player. Like I knew all about him. You know, he was, I was, uh, I think maybe in, in, I think 2007 was the year that I was probably closest to, to being in contention to get on the Lions tour 
um, you know, without a cap or whatever it was. Yeah. But then yeah, others, I wasn't close. I'd obviously um, wasn't played. Wasn't seven. Pardon? I mean, uh, oh nine. Oh nine. Oh, nine. Yeah. So it was when I've been informed because I played for England. That was probably the got you, got that you. Was six nations before that. Sorry, I uh, just didn't play very well. Missed out, and I was yeah. quite. I was probably the closest. And then I, I left Was, and that was that was it. Um, and so I was never on his kind of level in that respect. But I, I admired him as a player. I watched the way he played. Enjoyed like the physical encounters. So I'd see him off the game, and I was always one of these people <clears> that would always go up and say. Hello, like I never talked around the field, like I never trash talked, never never was weird on the field, like I was physical, but I would never say people, there's a lot of odd people who do that. Um, but I would speak to him after well, the game. Who's the worst defender at that? Oh, uh, who's the worst in Irish rugby? Terrible. There's a lot of terrible. Actually, it's not, it's not actually too bad in Irish rugby. We wouldn't, we'd, we'd have never had Johnny it. Sexton loves a little little pipe, didn't he? He'd have it if you were, if you were after giving it to him. Yeah, but that's what happened back. to him. So he's another one. And does he, I mean, does he, does he come at you with proper sort of... Johnny? Yeah. No, he he just bite back like he'd be like that's his that's his nature like he's but, but he, I would I would too if someone like if someone was giving me lots I'd, I'd give him some back on the QT like right. but I wouldn't be one to start it right you know what I mean yeah I mean, both just finish it there was a few there was a few like, Borthers was quite bad when, yeah. he, when he when he was on the field he used that. to talk um, now when I say about Johnny he was <laughs> one of the things that I had an encounter with him he said something to me like giving a penalty away and it, or, or something shock and I, and I gave it back to him and my response got Nigel Owen to come over to me and say, listen, there's you know, women and children watching this. You can't, you can't say? I can't say it on here. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's the one word we can't, we can't say. But it, so I thought with Johnny... So I actually that, found a bleepometer last week. Really? The budget's going up, obviously. <laughs> Amazing. So with, with, with that, I, I thought, um, you know, with Johnny that I wasn't going to get on, but I've got the house on fire. He's like a mate now. But with Sean, I actually, do you know what? The first time we, we'd spoken after games and one game when we lost uh, against... You guys, I think I was in the Grand Slam at the end of Six Nations. We had a few beers up in the... In the Aviva. In the Aviva yeah. together, yeah. right? And actually, because the first time I'd always talked to him, always like spoken, but it was always short-lived. I could see him looking at me. He's quite quiet. Before you know him or post-game, he was, he was quite quiet. But I, I, I wanted to be... Mate, I was like, he, he's like, I, I wanted him when? to be... I wanted him to be the Eng, uh, Irish friend. equivalent of me. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, a, like a big meathead, like fun, you know, everything else. And everyone said he was a good crack. Yeah. But when you see him, he's obviously very professional, so I didn't know. So we had a few beers, a few Guinnesses, and it and it it, it, it sort of eased down. We had a little chat, and then we didn't see each other. And then when we got on the tour, that's when the real synergy came. And was it like sort of two sort of... You know, rhinos circling each other, or did you give each other a hug and say, "Right, let's get into it"? No, it was kind of from the yeah. off on tour. It was straight in, like yeah. But like that's that's the great thing about line tours as well. Yeah, that's what you do with everyone. But yeah. we just got on. We got on very very yeah. well on the on the line tour. I kind of made it like. And who asked who to room with the other? Or was that decided? And he that? kept asking. <laughs> Did he really? <laughs> Shut up. Come and sleep in your room. No, no, I, <laughs> no it the problem is that I had to babysit him. Do you know what I mean? Once because the thing is, once they let once I'd survived a couple of nights because everyone was like, oh, when the, the names, it was like, Sean, fuck, thank God I've survived that. Like that. And then when they went to Brian Haskell, everyone was like, ah, I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and then I got in the room, and then as soon as I tolerated him, didn't complain. Every time they were like, "Actually, you're in. You're yeah, in with him." Yeah. What, what are they complaining about? Do you want to explain about anything? Chocolate. <laughs> Cho yeah. Well, what first of all, he's a thief. About? He's yeah. a thief. <laughs> right. I took, <laughs> I took all these sweets. Yeah. His missus was sending them. Yeah. yeah. To hide so, them and everything. Yeah. So what is what his thing is? Is like, what's mine is his, and what's his is his. That's he taught me a lot of farmer songs. Yeah. yeah. Taught me a lot of Irish songs. Yeah. Um, and then he was just, you know, he was just brilliant because, as I said, I'd watched like, when I was like playing, and, and and I always looked at my my competition internationally. And, and looked at them and, and looked at how they played. So it was great to spend some time with him and see what, what he was like. And we just yeah. got on. He was he was great and really made the tour for me. Obviously, I was nowhere near the test team. So we were kind of on different um, different sort of timetables. But the first, you start all three games, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So we were in there for the for the, for you know the test going through what he was going through with the, the starters. I was in the sort of the midweek veg, the sort of bin juice in in you know <laughs> the, the what do we call it? So the midweek yeah, was the yeah. mid the mid, the midweek veg or the mixed veg or something like that. We were in there. Um, so it was it was just very nice to kind of have that bond and actually see his personality. And the more we kind of laughed, I mean, we spent. 10 weeks just laughing hysterically and him my wife would send me Nick a little care package, <laughs> care package and I came back to the room and it had been open and he's, <laughs> you know, he's got big sausage fingers big dick fingers <laughs> instead of like doing anything gently he ripped it open <laughs> had the things away and everything else and I was like what have we done and he went they're room treats I was like <laughs> they're, they're what he goes they're room treats <laughs> It was unbelievable. Yeah, so yeah, well, and he taught me all the stuff, and then we made loads of videos. I made him, I took him fame. I made him global because he was big in Ireland, but I took what him. What did he do for your Instagram numbers? He didn't do much. For my Instagram <laughs> Is that right? Numbers. Actually, he didn't really. Hey, don't lie, fair. don't lie, Co don't lie. Couple of hundred, maybe. Couple, couple of thousand, of mate. Took him global. Um, how do, look, Lions now? What does what does Lions mean to you? One one in twenty thirteen. 
victory one in 2017 yeah is it the pinnacle is it yeah no it is I think it's the pinnacle of any rugby player's career 100% 100% and um, you know two brilliant tours like two incredible memories like from those tours brilliant like but um, yeah no it's that's all I can describe it as like. Do you keep mementos? Do you keep shirts? Do you keep? Yeah, oh yeah, I actually kept a lot of gear from both tours. Did you? Um, so most of it kept, mine. <laughs> kept, all, kept all test jerseys. Yeah. Um, so was them, it? It was Melbourne, them. 2013. Was it? Yeah. You got your. Yeah. Do you remember moments like that? And do they do they etched I, in time? Or? Yeah, I remember the very first announcement of the test team. Yeah. And I couldn't hold it together after because I was 24th man of the 2013, and I was. This is the first test. Yeah, I was training really well. Yeah, I remember. And I was like, I was, I was after having a really good year, and I was like, he can't kind of not pick me in my head, like, like is who who's he going to pick kind of ahead of me? But then Sam was captain, captain. and he wasn't going to put me in six or eight probably because uh, Lids and Toby I think started that first one. There's Tom Croft. Oh, Tom Croft actually, yeah. Crofty, yeah. And I remember going to Wig afterwards, and I was kind of shaking because I was half upset, like. But I wanted, I wanted, all I wanted was. How do I get in the test team for next yeah. week? That's what I wanted often. And he kind of couldn't send to me. He was like there going, oh, you know what I mean? You're not doing anything wrong. And I, I was pretty upset, but I got over it as well pretty quickly and out to training then and prepared the lads as best we could. Like, But yeah. that was the first time. Was that, you, because I wanted we had a scrap? He beat, up, he beat up? up Sam Warburton while he wasn't looking. <laughs> thought it was did, you have a, did you have a scrap the day you were left out? Or have I made that up? Oh, I don't know. There was a few scraps on that. Was <laughs> yeah, there was a few bits and pieces. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All on the field, or was all it? On, no, yeah, all yeah, on yeah. the field. All on the field. Yeah, yeah. There was, we were uh, scrapper in training. No, I wasn't a scrapper in training. But if if someone cheap shotted someone or me or whatever, I'd let him have it then. But like, I was never one to kind of start. Yeah. A row. I don't think anyway. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, <laughs> obviously Melbourne in 2013 was the one that got away, and then you started following because Sam did his uh, yeah. uh, hamstring. Yeah, day. so started to follow on. And what was that? I mean, what was that day? Yeah, the Sydney was, Test 41-13 or whatever it was. Yeah, it was it was incredible as well. It was unbelievable to be actually out there and the start of that game. Lids, uh, Dan Liddy had hit. I'm not sure who it was in the mid midfield, and I got a poach early on, and it yeah. was just like, a, you know what I mean? You're kind of into a game then, and like nothing's going to stop you. You're in, you're. Yeah. So that that whole game just flew by, like, and then you're on to the last one, like. So it was the the, the whole experience of that line tour. Yeah. For the first one was incredible. Yeah. Incredible, so it was. And bond in the changing room afterwards. Oh, we had some crack in that tour. Really. There's some stories in that tour like that that'll never be told probably because there were this is like, the place to do it. No, this is we are the safe haven. No one wants the place to do but like involving who? You don't have to tell the stories. We had so much who? fun involving everyone. Right, involving everyone. Like it was, uh, it, we just so much fun when we when we had the opportunities to have fun. We had so much fun together. Yeah, and like memories. Like if, I, I still giggle about some of the stuff that went on. Like you know, <laughs> I was looking through some of the video stuff the other day that oh, I've still have not posted half the things yeah. that we did and yeah. some of the stuff. Twenty seventeen. Yeah. yeah, go on. Well, no, there was a great, this was a great one where we're, so basically we were filming this video and uh, I think I put it up on Instagram. I might put it up after the, the, the show this week when Sh Sean comes down the side of the car. It's like he's flying past the window and taps on the door. Like Superman. But, but like Superman, but we're, we're messing around and we got the police involved, right? So police, so we basically got the police involved in this sketch. So basically they came and arrested Sean. Right, put him in handcuffs. <laughs> right, put him in the back of the I car. I don't have one either. Yeah, right. yeah, they take his top off. He didn't wear a lot of top. He's a lot of crying and wearing his top, really. And um, and, and he basically got bundled in the car. But his police guy, but the, the police guys were filming. But the police guy dummy, didn't he? Pretended to like give you a body shot, <laughs> and stuffed him in the car. So it was brilliant. But um, obviously they they were like, having a load of fun with us, and then kind of panicked that the New Zealand police. So I think reckon now is the time to put the video out there because it yeah, was so yeah. it was yeah, so much fun. Yeah. How do you compare the two? Because if we're honest, you were very critical. After 2017, have I've, you seen? Yeah, I, 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 have you seen him for a beer since? No, I haven't seen him for a beer, but I've 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 talked to him obviously. But the way that came across, I suppose, first and foremost, is like I didn't mean to be as critical as it came across, first yeah. and foremost. But what I did think was that we had such an opportunity with the team, with the squad we had to beat them, like yeah, and like it's the All Blacks in their backyard, and we could have beat them, yeah, and. Uh, my point was that it was just like we let a few things, a few things like weren't probably we missed we missed the trick with a few things like right um, well, in the first week 
probably overdone it a little bit as if, as the first as, test as I stated yeah and they caught it, <clears> kind of caught us with a different game plan as well they played an awful lot off nine running That's real right. hard and stuff and then the third week it just the week caught up with us a lot and I was missing for two days I was in a sighting I was after being That's sighted right. in Wellington and I'd said behind and then we were playing we were playing catch up kind of that week as well but like I just thought it was a massive opportunity to actually go and win it yeah um, so is, is it, like the players players did grab a hold of it like there's yeah. no doubt about that, but like the way the way I kind of had said it was that could have, yeah, that that the co- like that Rob, for instance, wasn't like doing anything, but it was that wasn't the case, like yeah. But like you have lads like Johnny and Owen Farrell, they're going to grab a hold of something, yeah, and they're going to grab it by the scruff and go, this is where we're going to do things, yeah. So if you saw Gats now, would it be handshake? Absolutely, Hi. yeah, yeah. Well, it'd be handshake from my point of view anyway. Yeah. I like, I'm. That's that's the way I roll. If if something is done and dusted, and we, I've I said sorry to them at the time, yeah. Um, for the way it might have come across, but explained to them my thought process behind it, and yeah. we moved on. Um, you did also score. I'm going to say the greatest Lions try of. I can't think of a better one. Yeah, some pretty good ones in the seventies. Can you just talk us through that, Williams? Yeah. Yeah, Liam Williams gathering that ball. Jonathan um, Davis, Elliot. Jonathan Davis, <laughs> Elliot, yeah. No, I was. I remember they kicking it back and we kind of had a thing. We had a thing with Ireland that year that you always kind of win the race backwards. Okay. And I remember just putting the putting the head down to get back first and foremost. And then Liam Williams goes and runs it, steps Kieran Reid and then... Tio, Tio, yeah, Tio blocks that's Sonny right. Bill and away with him. And I just, that's all I done. I put the head down again and said, right, try and keep up with these boys here now because he was gone. And uh, yeah, the rest of the history was class to be on the end of it. Are you somebody who, did, did you ever find yourself on the on the Massey, John Deere or Massey Ferguson? Massey, Massey. Do you find yourself on the Massey in the dark ploughing thinking, that was a special moment? Or are you somebody who just leaves all that and you're no, another time? No, not until, not until they're brought back up again. But no, I don't, I don't think about that stuff. You know what? <laughs> I don't have it on video or replay. Do you want to tell the truth? Come on, <laughs> you're sitting <laughs> you, in the room. You would have that. No, That's what you, you I wouldn't have stop that telling people. I, mean, I, want, I scored the greatest line try ever. Yeah, yeah. 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 I um, understand. But that was actually really, again, an interesting thing for me, watching <coughs> what a good player he was, you know, or is, I should say. Just seeing it up, up close, you know, just the speed, the power, the, diff, the different thing. It was quite nice as well, being able to come back into a room and like... You know, talk after the game. I've seen a test, or vice versa. He'd see me, and he goes, "I think you should do this." Or I would say, "Like I like that." Yeah. Don't don't put your head in too many breakdowns here. That'll come. You know, like we talked about the first test. You know, your destructive tackle. It was quite nice to be able to do that and see him see him firsthand and actually understand why he, he is the player. He you know he is. Mm. It was, that was really interesting for me as well. And the same thing with you know someone like Toby as well. You know, his his uh, finish in that second uh, yeah. second test. Yeah, you know, seeing watching corner. him go. Yeah. You know, his skills and stuff. It was great to see these boys and understand why the hype is. Because sometimes when you play against people and it's a competitive game, you don't get the overview. Yeah. But then to watch Sean in, in in action and watch Toby in action and the guys, it was it was pretty yeah pretty special. I imagine he's number one in the list of players you thought you weren't necessarily going to get on with, but ended up having a good bond with. Who are the other guys? Wales, Scotland, um, England. That I didn't think there was many lads I wouldn't get on with, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, no, I know. But, I'm t- yeah. Yeah, but in I, terms of guys perhaps you surprised yeah, with all... Yeah, there's a few lads probably just kept to themselves and didn't really try and get to know you as mm. such as, as well as other lads did, like we did, etc. But there's some great fellas there then as well, like um, like Sinclair, for instance. Yeah. Like, I, like I remember... <laughs> I remember sitting in the change room with him and he's like a big baby rhinoceros <laughs> in your arms. And I'm like, because after that second test, when yeah. we got the, won the penalty. What happened? So he, full time he, lo- yeah, he lost the head altogether. And then I was like, sink. So I walked him into the change room, had my arm around him, then sat him down at a wall and sat beside him. I was just, just like, look, the game has been won at that stage. I said, you have to keep your head like, these are big moments in games. If you reverse the penalty, it's over for us. Like, blah, blah, blah. But like small things like that. But, the character he is, and uh, you know, I roomed with him as well for a day or two. Like, and holy Moses, so funny, so so funny. Like, again, like he was always on about his back. So right. you, have, you have, always had to give him big compliments about his back, saying, "Jesus sinks your back is massive." <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's so it's so true. You also Honestly, no, 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 what was it? Was you just go? Someone go give sinks, and you'd be like, "Sinks." Have you been working out, bro? Yeah. Your back is massive. And he'd be like, do you reckon? Do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'd be looking at each other going, yeah. really? Yeah. Just wind him up the whole yeah. time. And then the thing with his back, though, is he had a problem with his lower back. Right. So on the, I don't know if they're living with Lions, uh, DVD. I haven't, I haven't, I've never watched it. But is um, 
the bits that were sinks would just be like in the middle of a meeting, more heat! And some bloke would come rushing in with rubber gloves on and deep heat, slathering on sinks his back, <laughs> like working him like that, literally right, smoking him. On, on It was unbelievable. You just hear more heat and people were like, sink, shut up. Yeah, we get his yeah. back put together, like, had a special warm up, didn't he? Ed Paskey, yeah. yeah. Paul Phil Pask on a string. Like, literally anywhere he went, he was like getting warmed up. Because he, 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 he'd watched too many NFL documentaries. Yeah. So he thought he was an NFL player. Yeah. So he was shouting, more heat, I need this, I need that. I mean, like, you're rooming with him, like, I, he used to ask me in the evenings, like, take, take a picture of my back to, <laughs> to make sure it was looking well, like, to make sure he felt good about himself the next day. Wow. But he was, uh, he's, uh, he, he like, more so okay. done that, though, for entertainment. Yeah. Like, it was hilarious, like, but there's loads of lads and, like, getting the likes of, let's say, Tipperick, who's a quieter fella. Yeah. He's actually a really nice guy and, you know, getting to know those guys was that's that's a great part of it too. It know? did look. He's another one, Tipperick. Like uh, you don't appreciate how skillful he is. Yeah. <laughs> like they they had uh, uh, Wales actually had a move where they like let him kick the ball because he was I that. Know it. I, I know it was a four man. It was a four man birdie because the, the, the the me and him were practicing it because when I seen him do it, I was like, I want to try that. <laughs> There's a four man off a line out like hit the first hit the first back roar and he chips it for the thirteen. Seven does. Yeah. So he's two more forwards here. He shows like this and then chips it for the thirteen. Yeah. I stood up. Yeah. They, they, Were you ever invited? They to slapped the ball down, <laughs> threw my boots in the thing, and said, "Absolutely yeah, not." Practice it for the third test. Yeah. yeah, but he never. But he really? knew. But he was. He would done. be able to nail it, and it was just yeah, he amazing. Was, he was brilliant. He, his skill set is could happily there. sit in the centres, couldn't? Yeah. He? Oh yeah. Um, we could do this for so much longer. Should we kick on because uh, we're sort of. <laughs> Keep the theme going. The great Ned Sheeran on Radio 4 used to play a game of celebrities that he'd interviewed called The authentic, the Authentication of Tall Tales. It's essentially a true or false about stories he'd either seen or heard. <laughs> you up for playing? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't stitched you up. It's fine. Pop the I'm told that hygiene is an issue, says producer Cy. Fine, Fods. James. Fods, James. What, in my, my respect or Sean's no, respect? You've, you've loaded us up with these. So do you want to There was a few things in the room, weren't there? Hygiene. I always wash myself. <laughs> I always you know, said that before. We all know about the squirrel. What's the squirrel? You had a dead squirrel on your back. No, the squirrel, like, you know, the squirrel patrol. Have you ever heard of squirrel no, patrol? No, no, what's that? So that's when you go in, like, and make sure lads are groomed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that what you're on? No, no, no. Oh, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah. I did a squirrel patrol. No, you've, you've, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, <laughs> false. True. <All> right. <laughs> is your, true or false, is your catchphrase, get in the van? Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, that's not from Get in the van. Get in the back of the van. <laughs> Get in the van. Pop the trunk. <laughs> Pop the trunk. Yeah. Right, no need to expand. <clears throat> um, what's wrong with your hands? Absolutely nothing, as far as I'm aware. Well, no, they are. They're like it's like a big foot sirloin steak with with <laughs> five from sauce. You. No, but look, he's got bit. No, they're like a big farmer's fingers. You've got very short fingers, actually. Yeah, yeah. You're like for stubbing and grabbing yeah. and like yeah. tearing things. Up, you know. True or false? You were never off your phone during the 2017 Lions tour. Glued to it, says our source. True. Why? True. A lot of people message me, wish me luck and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was why I was on it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Always to stay in correspondence. A lot of work, a lot of admin. Yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You used that. to spend about three or four hours in the evenings. Do you remember that, though? Admin. Admin. Yeah, the la <laughs> yeah, he used yeah. to get so yeah. razzed up. Admin, he used to get so razzed up, though, because... Uh, I wanted to sing songs and have a bit of crack. He'd be doing admin. Because right. he'd, he'd say you come in on a high. He goes, you ha you, he goes you're on having a high, James. You're having a high. You'll be down. You'll be down late. You'll be down. Watch. You'll be down. And I'll be sitting at work editing my book, that perfect fit, the fitness book, yeah. doing it. It'd be like, he'd be looking, will you get off that? What are you doing? Just asking all these questions. I had my earphones on, didn't I? <laughs> Trying to phase him out. True or false? You once arrived in Monaco in your games kit from the day before for the World Rugby Awards. <laughs> false, I think. 2017. Yeah, no, I didn't know. No, I was there. No, it wasn't a game kit. It was a suit for the game. No, it wasn't it? a suit. It was your freaking shorts and your, your, you'd been out. Oh, sorry. Yeah, your yeah. Your shorts and socks. True. Yeah. True. I, arrived, <laughs> True. I arrived in an Adidas pair of shorts. Yes. And <laughs> shocks. Shock. Into, shock. into the most fanciest hotel in, in, in Monaco. Into the casino in Monte Carlo for the World yeah. Rugby So we were after having a squad night out the night before. Yeah. yeah. And you'd gone straight through onto a plane. Yeah. Come down. O'Driscoll... And Jamie picked me up. I think the beauty of us is going on tour and bonding and everything else like that is, is that you keep some stuff to yourself. Good. Yeah. I don't think everybody needs to know everything. I mean, we, we, we put a lot of stuff out there. We did loads yeah. of videos yeah. together. We did yeah. things and we laughed. And we now, yeah. there's nothing better than looking over at a mate yeah. and just having a knowing laugh. Well, I was going to say, you know, when there's so much stuff like in, like in our team room and stuff that we've seen. Yeah. <laughs> like, there was, yeah, there was just things like that that, 
you know what I mean? If you put them out there, you're like, oh, that's madness. Like, but like, it's so funny to us. Like, no, no harm done now to anyone or anything like that. Like, yeah. But Do you remember when I came out and sleep was in story. my room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't think of him sleep in our bed. I mean, Sean, I was like, what? what's going on? You know when Sri McGeekin says you go on a lion's tour and in 20 years' time there'll just be a look? Yes. Is your look a little bit different to the look that <laughs> yes, he's referring it's a bit like... to? Yes, a bit like... You're still going. <laughs> We're right. Shh, shh, shh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't tell anyone anything. Don't, shh, don't say anything. Um, good. Well, I'm glad we got to the bottom of it all, but in some ways that... It's fuel on the fire of yeah. There is, and I, like I said, I did find a whole load of videos. So I'm actually going to put some stuff out there because we, we did have so much. We did have so much fun. And, and John, it was it was genuinely nice on that tour because I knew I was walking into a place where most people thought exactly what Sean thought. And by the end of it, I mean, I, I was quite open minded. I had no idea. Like I didn't think, for example, like I'd get on with Johnny or or, or Dan Bigger, and both of them became good mates. Yeah. Um. You know. Uh, just a few other guys like Rory Best and in, in, yeah. in Ian Henderson. You know. I mean, for yeah. the first week, I couldn't understand what Ian Henderson was saying. I think, every, I think everyone would have that opinion as well. He was yeah. probably, and not because he's standing beside, or sitting beside me now, but he was probably one of our best squad players. Oh, Jester. 100%, yeah. Because, yeah. in fairness, it is a tough place to be as well because he had a, he had a brilliant game against Highlanders. Yeah. Like, unbelievable game against Highlanders. And so, knowing that you're after playing on Wednesday, you're going to play on Saturday in a test, probably not like. Yeah. You know, if you're after playing the full 80, etc. So, it's a tough place to be when you're actually in good form as well. Yeah. But knowing where you are kind of in the squad and how and how you keep everyone entertained and upbeat and train well, etc. So he was probably one of the best lads at it. When? I love friend, it. Friend, a rugby friend. You were very good on that tour. Off, you played some super rugby. Um, okay, should we skip on? Because I want actually, just before we get on to the Guinness Point Predictor, just can you give us a bit more insight into some of the the island boys at the moment. I mean, Johnny is captain. Is he happy and carrying that comfortably? Absolutely. What's, what's he like around? Is he as angry in camp as he is? No, on the field? I, I like. I've I've had a, I have a great relationship with Johnny. Like he does, he laughs at me a good bit because I'd be giving him a kiss in the cheek, or I'd like I try to I kind of try and break the the bit of um, the serious side with him. Right. But like once he's working, he's working, and that's it. And you have to know that. And that's like us all, I suppose. Once we're on the field, we're on, we're ready to rock, and we make sure to do everything a hundred percent. So. I kind of did. I did say at the start of this Six Nations that with the type of players that's in there, the Pete's and Johnny's and all these boys, yeah. James Ryan, for instance, like they they were going to perform. Like everyone probably had him in a different bracket after the World Cup, etc. Yeah. So like he's a massive part of that, obviously, and a massive driver of it. So yeah. it's um, it's great to see him playing well and the team playing well at the minute. Like. Yeah. But they'll be they'll be absolutely looking forward to this weekend now. Of course I will. Um, a couple of the, Rob, so Robbie Henshaw had a stormer against Wales mm. and looks to be a sort of is he becoming one of the leaders now in that score? Was as yeah he the, would be like he on? would be. I think that's something that Leinster have developed with him as well over the past couple of years. And Robbie doesn't say a whole lot, but when he talks, people listen. Yeah. But he, he his actions are brilliant. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's going to be physical. He's going to know know his role, etc. And um, you know what you're going to get with him all the time. Is he the new king of Dublin? He's no king of Dublin. Yeah, he kind of which probably. Which of those boys is the king? Which of those of those boys is the king of Dublin? Between Robbie, yeah, I'd say Robbie. Yeah, Car Rob Carney was the king of Dublin. Yeah, he's a good Heavy looking man. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, though. Yeah. In this but, instance, mate, he's a good looking boy, Rob. Yeah, wasn't he? yeah. yeah. Rob, Robbie, yeah, Robbie probably thinks he's the king of Dublin. He, really? I see, he bought a. Black Land Rover there two years ago now. And right. He be he be quite into his style and stuff as well. So. Really tinted windows. Tinted windows, yeah, black, yeah. everything black. Yeah. Has he cut out the Connacht and just gone full Dublin as sort of? Oh, uh, he's full Dublin man. Yeah. He always was, I think. We've yeah. talked about the show before um, about uh, Peter Omani and his lawn. <laughs> yeah. And you and you like, right, would you just throw in gravel on it or like going mad? Like, do you, <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want to know because I told there's the pebbles, there's pebbles along his pathway. Yeah. And when I I go down and I do a bit of shooting with Peter every now and again and. I'd like be on a, on an orange to him. I'd be kicking them out. I kick a few pebbles out on the grass, and literally, like his lawn is like uh, a putting green. Right, like it is unbelievable. Like he spent, uh, I'm not going to tell you what he spent on a lawnmower, but he spent like ridiculous money on a lawnmower, and the lawn is the size of this room. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I did like I have like I've told him before. I said if he ever crosses me, I'm going to go down. and I'm going to spray it with Roundup. 
Roundup is a is a is, is a weed killer. It's a weed killer, like it'll kill everything. So I told him I'd spray the whole garden, everything, flowers, everything. If you ever cross, but it. that's what I mean. That's why I had to put up with ten weeks. So be it. His, mind, so his mind's working like the whole time because basically because he was on his phone, so he yeah. glued his phone. The whole world could be disintegrating around him. But when he wasn't on his phone, so he got your attention. He'd be on you like you wouldn't believe. He just says, "Ah, what are you doing, house? I'm hard as a rock. <laughs> Shut your mouth! I'll fucking fight you." Yeah. Pete, Pete's obsessed with with his garden, but it's on. In fairness, he has it looking. Why, why is he so obsessed with his garden? I think I think it's his bit of a release, you know, yeah. and his he doesn't think about anything else when he's yeah. in the garden. And I know, like, he's, he's a couple of kids now and stuff, and they're probably wrecking it on him, but, like, he has it looking unbelievable. Hasn't he got, like, little signs that say, keep off the grass for the kids, that they're not allowed on it? Like, oh, like, yeah, he'll, I, I can imagine he has. And the probably dogs, electric fence. The dogs aren't allowed on it or anything. No. Like that, yeah, yeah. Dogs have to crap in a small corner of... <laughs> <laughs> I think Swept up if Pete wasn't doing the lawn, though, he'd, be, he'd yeah. snap, wouldn't he? He's, got, he's a bit... Quite uptight, oh, yeah, and he yeah, Pete. Like yeah, he could yeah, explode. Yeah. Like he could be. He's a bit like Dexter. Yeah. He could yeah, actually yeah, go. You know, yeah. suddenly, Peter Martin has killed a hundred people. <laughs> 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 because John O'Brien's rounded he's up his lawn. He's his gun. <laughs> Won't be burying them under the lawn. Um, we have a we have a real man crush on Tyg Furlong on this show as well. Tins in particular, who can't split yeah. his vowels out in the right order. But just, I actually sat next to him at Rory Best testimonial, which yeah. is I've sent Tins a few photos with Ty just giving it that. Yeah. But a what a player and what a character. Yeah, a serious character. Tyg is from a club called New Ross yeah. down in Wexford. So be, he'd be just from the same kind of area as I would, the southeast. Yeah. And like his father is a character, a great storyteller. Um, everyone in that club would be the, of similar stature. Yeah. Just a really, really good, good club. And like Tyg is, yeah, Tyg is one of these special kind of players, I think, as well, because he has that. He has that character that's still in him. Yeah. And he's a great player, obviously. And the proper bowler. Yeah, and he's still proper. young, like. Still yeah. so young as well. So there's plenty more to come from him, but like he's a legend, so he's a great fella to be around and great lad to have a beer with as well. The other person that we were paying ode to last week, who we thought was looking very sharp, is Andy Farrell. Yeah. Looks good in his coaching box, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, he does. Yeah. He looks nice and relaxed, actually. Yeah. Looks nice and relaxed. What's th what's the word in the street about how he's finding the step up and To be honest with you, I haven't since he's been in there, I haven't uh, I haven't been chatting have you, any, have any you of the boys. Left him your business card or He sent me a text actually two weeks ago, yeah, just to see how I was uh, see if everything was going according to plan and all yeah. so it was nice for him to check in. But I haven't actually asked the lads or sat down with the lads to be honest and, yeah. and said, Well what's what's going on? But you can see, I, I can see definitely from the first two games yeah. what they're, they're trying to implement uh, a new kind of style and bits and pieces. So it'll be interesting to see the evolution of that now over this championship yeah. and see where it takes us. But yeah, he looks really real comfortable and, you know, I've always gone on really well with him. So I can imagine how enjoyable it is there with him because yeah. he's that type of uh, man as well. He wants people to enjoy their work as such. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully it goes great for him. Big test this weekend, yes. which leads us very nicely on to our Guinness Six Nations pint predictor. Uh, download the free match pint app, set your scores, win pints, prizes. You can take us on in our House of Rugby League as well using the code HOR. I'd love to see how you get on with 10 relatively easy Six Nations questions. <laughs> Pretty badly. <laughs> Hopefully better than you're doing in the league at the moment. Has currently in 2,738th position <laughs> with 3,100 in the league. Oh Sai is up in 1,294th. <coughs> Tins is really rocking along, 989th out of 3,100. <coughs> Just... 126th. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, Ollie Gosling is in the, in the lead. Well done to you, Ollie. Can you give us a prediction? I can give you a prediction, yeah. probably. Yeah. Break a rule. Um, can't bet. Okay, hang on. No, I'm going to ask you money. specific questions. Italy, Scotland. Who wins by how many and why? Good game. It's a quick game. Italy by three. Italy by three. Yeah. Parisa's says last game. Wow. I think, and you think the emotional factor? Is it, is it not do he might do England on the bench. Oh, yeah. They say yeah. in the final oh. round, but this is—is is it at home? Yeah, Italy. It's in yeah. Italy. Yeah, Italy by three. Italy by three. I think they played well the last day they played. <laughs> Hoff, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say uh, Scotland by fifteen. Scotland by fifteen. Okay, uh, what's tins gone? Scotland by twelve. I think Scotland will. Yes, I think Scotland by twelve. Okay. Uh, Wales, France. Ooh, France, bye. That's interesting. Five. That's by five. Why? <laughs> five. Um, I did say at the start of the tournament, they're fearless. Yeah. Um, they're, ver they're very exciting players. Yeah. And they look like they're building something nicely. That's by five. That would be, that would really shake things up. Because that, yeah, it's gone. I thought, I th we talked about it last week, I thought sh France, um, uh, Wales playing some really 
good good rugby. Really enjoyed watching them. But I think France were on a bit of a roll, and I said them by ten. Flipping egg. Okay, but I don't know anything. Like I don't know anything about rugby. I'm two thousand seven hundred and something. So what? Thirty eighth. Thirty eighth. Three eight. True. True. Uh, true. What tins go? France by five. Wales by. We need to make sure that he knows seven. what the numbers are because he didn't go to school on Tuesday. So when you say by ten, is that like how many? How are you working that out? It could be twenty, thirty. Ten Re- points. <laughs> Win by ten. Like. Right, right, fine. Uh, you, is it? Last yeah. but not least, England, Ireland. Ireland by seven. Why? I think we'll see another little bit of hopefully what they're trying to build. I think they showed glimpses of it the last day. Yeah. And I think they'll be very unhappy about the last time Ireland England met and emotionally they'll be they'll be charged. Right. Um, is that a thing when taking on England that you can I find think, a little I think, extra? 10%? I think it is. I think it is because Was it a thing for you? Yeah. Because you're, it's an Ireland England game at the end of the day, and regardless of what people say about it, it's Ireland v England, yeah. and um, you know what I mean. That's just the history of it, yeah. and you don't want to you want to draw a line in the sand, and you don't want them to cross it. So, I think it'll be I think it'll be a cracker, but I do I do think Ireland will win. Everybody fucking hates us. <laughs> Everybody hates us. Not hate. Hate's a very strong word. Yeah. What is it then? We just want to beat you <laughs> <laughs> because we hate you. No, not. Yeah. I don't think it's a hate thing. Well. I wouldn't say. Well, as no. soon as you go into history, that's where you're sort of. I know, but that's see, that's then. I think now, like people, we respect each other as rugby players. Yeah. But we don't give each other an inch. Okay. So I can't, I can't go and say, oh, I hate the English lads. Right. Because I don't hate the English yeah. lads, but I don't want to lose them. Yeah. Only by seven. I said England by five. Because. Um, I think that uh, we haven't. I think England will obviously have improved from from um, Scotland again after France not pulling any pulling any um, you know pulling the trigger on anything. Yeah. You know Scotland we didn't learn a lot about them. Other than the back row was the difference. I think they've had two weeks to build up to this game. I think that it's at home uh, and they haven't got the you know Ireland haven't got the the weather and that little wizard to come out and put the spell on <laughs> the players and, and whatever he does before <laughs> the game and um, I, I just believe that England are in, in, you know, can play some good rugby and will hopefully get the upper hand Missing, yeah. missing Mac of Unapola now as well Yes I didn't see that Does Genge therefore yeah. start or do you go back to Joe Marler? Uh, I think they'll go with Marler I think they'll probably go with Marler but I would yeah I'd put Genge my general Is he really on the show next week? I thought you know, he's not on the show <laughs> I would Joe I mean, I, I love Joe. I just, I just think Ellis has been playing so well. I think it's been really exciting to see him on leash. But maybe because of his role as the, the finisher, mm. um, it, it might be better for him. Tins has gone England by seventy-four. By what? That's how much he respects Ireland. <sighs> he got a lot of grief last week. Actually, yeah. he's gone England by seven. He's upset. Seventy-four. Uh, no, no, he's, no, he's joking. He, 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 he was yeah. Simba <laughs> <Where is he? laughs> he? See what I he's mean? He's gone England by seven. He just <laughs> gets <laughs> grief <laughs> teeing up. up the trunk in the van. The eyeballs nearly yeah. fell out. Yeah, he does, and he gets that's what he gets fired up. You see, yeah. he's like the He goes. He, he reckons he doesn't start anything, mate. He's a simmering mess. I'm like that. <laughs> Honestly, um, do you think? Do you think it? Do you think we're going to get a good game, England, Ireland? Yeah, it's gonna be... I hope so. If the weather's okay, I don't know what that's going to be like. I think it, it, it should be. It's always a massive encounter. I mean, look, I said I'm actually going over to Ireland on Thursday to do a, a, a show on over gig? there. We little gig. Um, I, I'm not sure what the show's called. Actually, it's a. Uh, I should probably <laughs> probably learn where it Another is. Another envelope being opened on the <laughs> No, no, no. Come home. It's um, it's uh, you know, obviously going over there and talking about it. Look, my heart, the hardest thing I ever played against consistently was Ireland. Yeah. You know, going to Viva was was a, a <laughs> place that I just hated. We only won there a couple of times. I think some warm up World Cup warm up games. Um, and I can't remember any Six Nations games potentially. I don't know. Six a few years ago. In the yeah, boring but it wasn't it wasn't ideal. So I just think that um, over in our place, it can it can can make a little bit of a difference. Mm. Um, and I think it should be quite a good game, hopefully, because both teams want to play a certain type of rugby. And both want to yeah. be physical. Yeah, you know. Um, let's see, where you're getting big into the corporate scene over here. A couple of things to do. A few bits and pieces. Hello, <laughs> you know he said, fathers. You know when he said he doesn't talk to the Ireland team now, or the Irish players, because you, you, you moved on now, aren't you? You're over here, you're, you're living life, yeah. He's got a, sh- he's got a chateau. Well, we don't want to say about right, <laughs> yeah, He's got a chateau. Honestly. Where are you living? I'm living in Teddington. Are you? Yeah, don't nice, tell them the address. Nice yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. It's nice, sir. Um, what's next? What's on the do list? When are you going to play? Uh, hopefully next few weeks. Really? Yeah. Are so. you sort of caged animal, or are they just sort of... Pouring a bit well, you saw what happened when you suggested. I'm just making sure that I'm fully right before yeah. I go back. There's no point in going back 80%. Right. Be 100 and and go back fully then. And are you living London life? Have you been to the London Dungeon? And the I Tigers haven't. I haven't seen much because London I've I've spots. really been just training hard and getting myself right. So once I get back playing and and um, 
feel a bit better, I'll uh, I'll start uh, hitting your man up here for a few freebies. <laughs> how get have, me into a few places. How have um, Teddington taken to you turning up in a Massey Ferguson tractor with a sheep under your arm? <laughs> <laughs> Are they they used to that round there? Bushy Park. That's where I let him out every day. <laughs> <laughs> You're given the freedom of a city, you're allowed to drive people. Yeah, uh, yeah. Really, you? yeah, but when yeah. when Sean came over here, one of his teammates had to tell him that he couldn't just pluck wildlife out of the parks and start eating yeah. it and cooking <laughs> it and chasing it, like because he was trying to, you know. Um, it's been really nice to have you on. Thank you very much Thanks for having me. Um, good luck. Go well. What were you going to say? I mean, I was just very excited to see him back playing because I think uh, I think the game will be uh, better for it to see him yeah. back smashing it for London Irish and and also you're going well. You're I love, going all right. I love how uh, far off top four at the moment are you? I think there's about I think there's only four points between the three three or four teams. Yeah, winning. Yeah, we're eighth. Good win of the weekend. Yeah, I, I've wanted to get Sean on here for a while because I always find him very funny and actually very articulate. But the thing with it is that when he ever with Ireland, we're ever yeah. doing any media stuff, right? They never. <laughs> Joe Schmidt would never let. Sean. Any personality? No, no, never let Sean go anywhere near anything. I met this uh, lady from Vodafone once. She was Irish, and we were talking about stuff. And she went, "Yeah, Sean O'Brien is brilliant. You know, knows all the people. He's fantastic. We love getting him in." But um, he, he did it for us once, and then it was like, "No more. Too, too much personality. Too, too, too funny." Well, yeah, maybe. Were you bit, frustrated by that as a player? Um, did you want to do more did, than you were allowed to? I didn't to? really think about it, to be honest. But it was probably in the background, yeah. With that, with that situation, it was it was probably being said. But we we probably wouldn't know about it. Right. Such, you just wouldn't be doing media. But just as an aside, from a Sky perspective, whenever we were doing Pro Fourteen a few years ago, we'd always ask for a player from each club or country that you yeah. were doing a game in, and we were never ever ever allowed Irish players. Yeah, it's it's, it's strange, really odd if you're like trying to sell the game, promote yeah, the game, get yeah. people watching. Someone like you or Johnny, yeah. or Rob Carney in to studio. To be honest, we, would, help we, would, we wouldn't mind that. Like, but it was probably. That's probably yeah, there's the always just a blanket, no. Mm. Whereas Wales said, yeah, great tuck in and Scotland that way. Yeah. Very nice to have had you on here. I, I feel there's so much more that we could have milked from the teat of this conversation. But We could sit, get, him, get him a few games under his belt and get him back. Yeah, 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 see yeah, what yeah. The story is. Maybe when you finish playing, we can yeah, yeah. We'll do another yeah. one. Well, there's a few things we still can't go, you know. We still <laughs> <laughs> don't you know, don't just, mind him. Yeah, there's a few bits we just got to just <laughs> keep the old... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is it for this week thank you for watching thank you for listening to House of Rugby uh, we're a YouTube show and a podcast don't forget Liquid Football with Kelly Cates and the team which is out every Tuesday morning uh, we've got TKO returning with Chris Lloyd and Carl Frampton as well previewing Fury Wilder from Vegas out on Thursday who wins? Uh, I'm going to say Fury yeah same really? Yeah. I was a very good thing on BT Sport the other day about the 12th round which is him getting laid out yeah. and then how he came back from it. It was uh, uh, really good. But didn't they, didn't they, well, I, think, I think he's just going to outbox him again this yeah. time. But he's going, to be, he's going to be a little bit more smarter about it. Yeah. He, he'll outbox him again. Amazing. I think he might try and win on points maybe as opposed to... Well, you he know. says it's going to be quick, but I don't think he will. No. Nah. Nah. Just take it 12. Uh, thank you to the 1,200 of you who have uh, picked up tickets for the House of Rugby live show in two weeks' time. Uh, that's going to be at the depot in Cardiff. We've got rid of 1,200 tickets. Three hours it took to sell out. Is that right? Yeah. That's Amazing. If you do have a ticket, it should be a great night with James, Mike, myself and some special guests. Look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, fellas. Go well. You're Go right. rip it up again. Thank you. Uh, right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We will see you again in seven days' time. Bye for now. You've been watching the House of Rugby on Joe. Together with Guinness. Drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk for the facts.